Hey there, it's Gary Parrish. Welcome back to the CBS Sports Eye on College Basketball Podcast, where we sometimes discuss camel fighting, dodo birds, and leaky black. Matt Norlander is here with me. If you're watching on YouTube, please smash the like button like you're Brandon Davies. You have consent, and while you're smashing, please let me remind you what we got going on over a 10-week span. It's called the Summer Shoot Around. It's a series during which we're going to focus on 20 notable teams over a span of, of 10 weeks, two per week. 20 teams in 10 weeks, and we're doing the schools in alphabetical order. So we've already knocked out Alabama, Arizona, Arkansas, Auburn, Baylor, and Creighton. Now we turn our attention to the Duke Blue Devils. They went 32-7 and last season, won the outright ACC t- title, got a two-seed in the NCAA tournament, and then y- you probably remember lost to North Carolina in the Final Four, at which point Mike Krzyzewski's Hall of Fame career was done. From that team, Duke lost. Paulo Bancaro, Mark Williams, Trevor Kills, Wendell Moore, A.J. Griffin, Joey Baker, Theo John, seven of the top eight scores. That's a lot, but the Blue Devils are bringing back Jeremy Roach and enrolling the top-ranked recruiting class in the nation, one that includes four five-star prospects, among them three of the top four prospects in the class of 2022, according to 24-7 Sports. I- I've got Duke ranked fifth in the preseason CBS Sports top 25-1. and one. We'll see what dead leg thinks of John Shire's Blue Devils next, but first... A word from our sponsors. Whoa. Your dad's a superhero. No. My dad can't handle hot wings. Check this out. Step into the spotlight. Playtime's over, kids. Prepare for war. Here we go! Hold it, hold it. These things are warm. You got the winner suit. Ready PG. All right, Dead Leg. I got Duke ranked fifth in the top 25 and one. How are you feeling about John Shire's first year as the head coach at his alma mater? We're going to do a little game here in a minute uh, that's going to take a trope from our buds over at the Cover 3 podcast. They've been doing plenty of uh, look aheads and previews, team previews, conference previews for the college football season. And they've got a uh, win total special. So we will do win totals on this one uh, with Duke in the regular season. But before we get there, I was interested to see, you know, what Duke was before K got there. You know, you, you, this is uh, a massive changing of the guard. I think it might even take a, a bit for Duke and for the press and for fans to get used to the fact that when the Blue Devils are on television, Mike Krzyzewski won't be on the sidelines. In fact, he said a couple of times uh, he like he'll be at Duke games next season. I'm confident of that. But he has said like you know he's not going to be at every one, and there'll be plenty that he won't be at, and he probably is going to want to intentionally avoid some of the spotlight there. But it's going to be weird. No K on the sidelines for Duke, and Shire's going to be uh, going to be in command and making the calls and and running the whiteboard and every timeout and all that good stuff. And um, as someone who got to sit literally right behind Duke's bench for. It's elite eight win to get to the final four. And I saw actually Sh- Shire commanded one huddle and Kay did most of it um, uh, on a, on a personal professional note. It was awesome to get to see K basically tear into his guy. <laughs> it's just, it, like you would have never thought like he was like a, a game away from having his career done. He was a, a fiery presence there. Duke before K took over. This was a little surprising to me. If you're a Duke diehard, you're aware of this, but I wasn't, uh, this wasn't at front of mind. I knew it made that run in the late seventies. It was good, but the season before coach K took over Duke was a 24 and nine team under bill Foster and made the elite eight. Um, we could set the over under will, will Duke win as many as 24 games in Shire's first year. And will it go as far as the elite eight, which is of course it went one game beyond that last season. I don't know. Three seasons leading up to K getting the job though. GP 73 and 24 made the NCAAs each year. Duke was number one in the AP poll two of the three years before K got there. And in the other season, it got as high as number seven. I only bring that up to say, uh, as a reminder, that Duke was a proud program before Shashevsky got there. It's just that Mike Shashevsky elevated it to a national presence and arguably the best program in the entire sport. That's what Shire is inheriting. You've got Duke highly ranked. If you want to have some skepticism, you deserve it. Shire's never coached a game. Now, we did ask a question a year ago in our Candid Coaches series to 100 coaches or so. Who's going to be in a better spot five years from now? Duke under Shire or UNC under Davis. And at that point, I want to say it was like a 70-30 almost split there. I think that number would be lesser if we asked it today. Um, 
But Shire hasn't coached a game, and he has more turnover from a roster standpoint than any other power conference coach comfortably. Kansas is kind of close, according to Torvik's data, but it's Duke by far. By far has the most roster turnover. There's some good guys there, GP, but uh, we'll, we'll see how Shire adapts from having been the lead recruiter on all these players that are going to be playing this season. He was a big factor in Duke coming off of, you mentioned the names. Duke just sent five guys to the NBA draft. We mentioned this on draft night. That was a program record. Duke has, with regularity, sent two, three guys into the NBA draft into the first round, but it had never had five NBA picks and five first round level kind of picks. That's a lot to lose. Um, I do. I, I swear I'm not going to make this a continually running thing. And I, at some point, I got to put the, I got to put my name to it and rank these teams. I do think you have Duke too high. With that in mind. Let's go win total. Just regular season, 31 games, not counting the ACC tournament, GP, not counting the NCAA tournament. Win total for the regular season. Knock on wood, we don't have, hopefully this will be the first time since, I guess, technically, GP, 2018-19, that the regular season will be literally unaffected and untouched by COVID-19 because even 2020 lost some regular season games, technically, with that, I believe. Um, if they can play a 31-game regular season schedule, how many does Duke get in its First season under John Shire. And I have the non-conference. If you, if you want that as aid, I have the non-conference ready for you and the listeners. But 31 games. How many are they getting to? W's. Well, they had 26 wins um, in the regular season last season. They went 26 and 5. I would take the under on that. I would, take, I would go under 26 simply because there's so many new pieces. Um, you know, I, I think North Carolina's going to be the pick to win the ACC. So they're not going to be a projected conference champion. They were um, conference champions last season. Um, let's go 23 and eight. 23 and eight going into the ACC tournament. Here's the non-con schedule before I give you my answer. They open with Jacksonville, then USC upstate. Then they got the champions classic against a Kansas team that is, that sets up as a, as a potential top 10 matchup. Of course, then home again, Delaware and Bellarmine. Yes, this is looking like a bit of a coach K schedule, but then it does get challenging. PK 85 over on the other coast. They'll start with Oregon State, then they'll play either Xavier or Florida, which means that will be a matchup between uh, new coaches and new spots. You know, Sean Miller and and Todd Golden going against John Shire, depending on how that shakes out. And then do could play Gonzaga in a PK 85 title game. If not, if if either, you know, if losses happen along the way, uh, Purdue or West Virginia would be be the teams that kind of line up for Duke there. Portland State is a long shot, uh, a long shot, but those are PK-85. They'll come home, play Ohio State in the ACC Big Ten Challenge. That's a home game for Duke this season. They'll get Iowa at Madison Square Garden, Cameron Indoor North in the Jimmy V, and then their final non-con game is on December 10 against Maryland Eastern, Eastern Shore. That's 11 non-con games, 20 ACC games for 31 total. I will go 22-9. and nine. I almost went 23-8, and eight, but considering you've got Kansas- Ohio State's going to be good. It might be tough for OSU to get a win in Cameron. I get that. Uh, but then, like, PK-85, it's not inconceivable they take on a couple of losses. And then consider the ACC regular season slate. You know, they got to go on the road and play UNC, Miami, Virginia Tech, and Virginia. Those are four teams that I think would comfortably, objectively register as NCAA tournament contenders, GP. Syracuse on the road is also in there. We'll see about that. And then there's, you know, they got to play, obviously, Carolina twice. And there's... I don't know. I, I think there's a lot, of, considering how much turnover there is, Shire's first season. Um, I don't know. I, I I I could be selling a little bit low here, and that's why I think you've got him a little high. Um, Twenty three and eight, I think, is is probably uh, probably the sweet spot there. I'd be surprised personally, given the schedule and the ACC, which I think should be pretty good. Anything that's twenty five wins north, twenty five wins or better going into the ACC tournament uh, would surprise me. But we're right, we're right there. So I guess unofficially for listeners at home, if you want to play by play uh, play our game, we've got them at twenty two point five regular season wins over under. GP at twenty three and me at twenty two. After hearing you go through the non league schedule, I I might tick it up a game or so. Ooh, okay. like I, that that non league schedule doesn't scare me. Um, you know, I think they're at least on paper better than Kansas. Now, um. You know, Bill Self is arguably uh, the greatest active coach in college basketball, and so, given that John is entering his first year, you'd you'd have to reasonably put a check mark in the Kansas uh, column there. But I think John's going to have better players 
And so I, I, I would pick Duke over Kansas on a neutral court. Um, obviously, I'm picking Duke over Iowa in the garden. I'm taking Duke over Ohio State uh, in Cameron. I'm taking Duke in all those bye games. And PK80, let's say they go 2-1. and like, I, I think that's to- that- you got, so you got them at ten and one going into ACC play. I feel like I mean, I mean I, 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 yeah. How about that? I don't think they'll go ten and one, but I bet you they'll be something like favored in ten games. I, I would I, like, right. yeah, yeah. I, I bet the only game they're an underdog that you ran through is a possible Gonzaga game. I could see maybe Kansas, but you're pr- they'll probably be favored in Kansas. It'll be close, but yeah, I think technically you're probably right. They, they got a lot of talent. We just got to see how Shire does leading it. I mean, he was the lead or instrumental lead recruiter or instrumental recruiter and in everyone that's going to be uh, playing for him this season, obviously. And, you know, I'll let you run down the names and the guys there. But the, the guy that, you, that I'm most excited to see is Derek Lively, who I figure is going to start at the four. He's tall enough to be a five, but he's 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 a stretch guy like he's he's got potential to turn himself into a top five pick next year. Um, so there is a lot there, but how are those pieces going to mesh? And then will Jeremy Roach, who's obviously going to return and be the starting point guard. How much is he going to jump? He had a strong finish to the end of last season, Parrish. Uh, for me, I only sell a little bit based on the unknowns that are there. It, yeah, obviously, Duke is Duke, and, and they're going to be good. Um, the question is, how good will they be immediately? The rosters aren't comparable, but obviously UNC had some of its struggles early on before it really found its momentum on the back end of the regular season into the tournament. Not saying Duke's going to duplicate that, but uh, Hubert Davis was a longtime member of that staff, and we saw what happened just a couple miles up the road on Tobacco Road. Uh, by the way, before we go through this roster, um, evidence that the retirement tour for Coach K was effective um, is, is in this roster. Um, you know, they got to announce to the world, uh, you know, this is going to be John Shire's program. So if you come to Duke, you're playing for him. And that freed John up to go out and, and recruit his first team. And I would argue, I, I would, I would, I think this is, I, I can't, I can't imagine it's not true. No first year coach has ever, uh, you know, uh, it, it, no, an assistant being promoted to head coach has never taken over uh, a, a roster this talented or, you know, secured a recruiting class quite like this. I mean, he's not only got the number one class in America, it's got three of the top four prospects in, in, in the country. So K got to go out rather than with a canceled game and a COVID ACC tournament, you know, with a trip to the final four. And John got to recruit like crazy to set himself up for success. And he undeniably has not only did he enroll the number one class in 2022 right now, he's got the number one class in 2023 as well. To me, the front court's the most interesting place. Um, You think lively could play the four, I I guess I I imagine like, and it could be interchangeable, but they've got two bigs that that are going to play together. And that's Cal Filipowski and Derek lively. They're both five-star Bigs in the class of 2022, Derek Lively, number one, Philip, uh, Filipowski, number four. And, you know, it, this is not the way most people play basketball now with two, you know, bigs. But Filipowski, you know, he can bounce it. He can pass it. He, he can. can yeah, he, yeah. he can shoot it like he looks like a perfect pick and pop option. Just to remind myself what he looked like, I went back this morning and like watched a lot of YouTube stuff on him. And I mean, he was he's very comfortable playmaking and picking and popping and and you know the shot is effortless. I I, I so the, I don't think they're going to get in each other's way too much. Like the the concern with playing two bigs, you know, in a traditional way is they just they clog the paint no driving lanes they're in each other's way i don't think these guys are going to get in each other's way too much um you know cal he has a twin brother who is also seven foot that he's played with like his entire life so he's used to playing with another big guy and as you know uh derek lively played with jalen duran uh on the eybl circuit so w- what's interesting they have both played with similar sized players on the court with them um recently and 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 for much of their lives. So it, it, that won't be too weird for them. Um, 
you know, whatever you call them, you know, Filipowski's the four, Lively's the five, switch it up. I, they'll be they, on, can either, they can do either one. Whatever, uh, yeah, exactly. whatever, yeah, whatever they do. Uh, they're they're going to be in the front court together, and I, I think I think it's going to be um, really effective. Uh, Filipowski doing all the things I've explained, and then Lively being an incredible rim protector on the defensive end of the court. Like we joked last summer about Jalen Duran. Like, was he really as tall as he was listed? Um, Derek Lively is <laughs> Derek Lively is every bit of seven foot one and he looks it. Um, I, you know, if you go back and listen to that podcast from Peach Jam in the summer of 2021, uh, you know, when I was making the case, I didn't think Jalen Dern really should be the number one player in his class. Um, some of that was, um, are we even sure he's the best player on his grassroots team? I, I didn't think so. I thought Lively might be better. And Jalen Dern was obviously awesome at, in his one season at Memphis. So I think Lively is going to be awesome in his one season, presumed one season at, at Duke. Another five-star freshman, I assume, will be in the starting lineup, Dariq Whitehead, 6'6 wing. He's ranked second in the class of 2022. Great athlete, can score at the rim, can score at the three-point lines, a three-level guy. Um, you know, he, he, he's he, you never know how somebody is going to, def, you know, be on the defensive end of the court as a as a freshman, but, like, he's got the – you know, physically, he's got the stuff to be an effective, um, you know, um, a, a, an effective and impactful player on that end of the court. And, you know, like you, you look at that at, at the three, four, five, they're going to have five star freshmen who are six, 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 eleven, seven foot one. It'd be really big. And then in the backcourt, it's probably Jeremy Roach. It's definitely Jeremy Roach and and Jacob Grandison the 6'6 super senior transfer from Illinois who averaged 9.6 points uh, while shooting 41% from three at Illinois last season in 25 minutes per game. So you've got the experienced point guard, third-year point guard in Jeremy Roach. Um, you've got a, a, an established and proven, you know, power conference, you know, NCAA tournament team shooter um, who's a senior. And then you, you complement that with, you know, three five-star freshmen. And then they got another um, transfer from Northwestern, Ryan Young, who you know averaged nine points, four point two rebounds last season, but only played seventeen point one minutes per game. His playing time decreased each year for three straight years at Northwestern. Like he started thirty one games as a redshirt freshman, then only started four as a sophomore, only one as a junior. So for whatever reason, that that that's trending the wrong direction. But he's another. He's another veteran piece that can help balance the roster a little bit. He'll be there if they need him. Duke should be plenty entertaining. The, the talent's undeniable. I really love Whitehead. Uh, was one of my you know three or four favorite players I saw on the circuit last year. Obviously, his last season playing on the grassroots circuit. And Lively just yeah, Lively feels like. And now we'll see how he's deployed. I actually like Lively's overall both ends arsenal better than Filipowski. Um, but lively, I, I, he could be one of the four or five biggest names in the sport by the time f college football fades out, and we get the grant that's if Duke is outperforming what what I thought I might they might be from a record standpoint. We'll wait and see on all that. Uh, last thing for me is that the staff changeover. There's a lot of change beyond just the roster. Um, Shire gets promoted. Chris Carwell's still there. Nolan Smith left for Louisville, so he was replaced uh, by another coach in Kentucky at the University of Kentucky. Jay Lucas is now. Uh, an assistant on staff. And then Emil Jefferson got bumped up. He got promoted. He's the third assistant. He's 29 years old. I don't know if he is the youngest power conference assistant coach, but he's certainly one of the two or three youngest uh, there, but pr from promoting within. But uh, the big thing is that Lucas getting the gig uh, is the first time in, you know, two and a half, three decades that Duke has actually brought someone on staff that uh, wasn't uh, a Duke man, uh, if you will. So um, a lot of change in a lot of spaces there. And, Big new frontier, GP. Don't know. I, I expect Duke to be easily in the NCAA tournament. I do not expect Duke to be a number one seed or a number two seed, frankly. Um, but I think a realistic goal for a Duke fan, and I know Duke fans, like, you know, people can't decide whether I'm in the bag for Duke or I hate Duke, which is an amazing, which just speaks to Duke. Oh, by the way, um, I think a reasonable target for Duke in the first season under John Shire, remember Carolina, made the title game out of the eight line. I would say uh, search for that three, four, five line. And I think you'll be doing just fine. Top three in the ACC. 
you know, if you're finishing fourth, I still think that's more than reasonable there. And what I'm excited to see is like how Shire runs the program. They are going to, you know, kind of pull back a little bit of the curtain. They are going to be doing things a little bit differently that maybe fans will notice and fans will never have an idea of because from a media perspective, like this was, you know, Mike Krzyzewski, because I guess he earned it, was like he was the he was the coach that had uh, the biggest barricades around him. The, there was not good access to Mike Krzyzewski for the final 20 years of his career, essentially, and that's fine. But uh, Shire will make himself more available and, and there will be a more transparency with Duke and, uh, and I think that is a very good thing. I think that is helpful for Duke. I think it's actually really good for Duke. And dare I say it, some people will refuse to believe this, but if Shire ends up actually winds up hitting, um, maybe he makes Duke into you know a program that isn't as hateable as it had become over the, the second half of Shashi's career. Maybe it still will be. And that's also a good thing for the sport to have these uh, programs that take on some level of villainy, whether wanted or not, embraced or not. Uh, we'll wait and see on that. But I am I am actually pretty intrigued uh, to see where Duke goes here in this new era. And what a weird era it will be, though, JP. For me, I, you know, I'm still it's it's still going to be a bit bizarre because you and I both and so many people listening to this podcast, the majority of people probably listen to this podcast. Uh, they don't know this sport without Mike Krzyzewski in it. And he's uh, he's now no longer in it. And that reality doesn't really set in until we get four, five, six, ten games into Duke's season, and he's just not there. Uh, that'll be a little bit weird, but uh, I'm excited to see it nonetheless. One of the ways in which the program will be run differently is from a scheduling perspective. John has already made that clear. They they got the home and home with Arizona. Is yeah, that, right? that starts next season, which is wonderful. Love to right. see it. Yes. Yeah, but like I, I know John was is interested in. Yes, you're going to do neutral site games at the Garden, and you you know out in uh, you know multi team events in Portland. You're going to everybody does those things, and so Duke is going to continue to do those things. But I think you're going to see John. I, I know he's interested in taking them on the road and like taking this big brand that he is inheriting, um, and and taking it into other people's buildings. Uh, not every coach in America as we've learned over the past week is, is comfortable doing that. But I think John Shire is going to be, and, and I, I love that because, um, you know, basketball games are best when they're played in true home and road environments. And uh, I, I know that's one way in which John um, is going to you know be aggressive. Like he's not going to be afraid to take his, his team into uh, a non-league opposing arena. Um, you mentioned the staff as you were running through it. Um, is that the youngest staff in the country? Mm, I mean, at a power conference. Ooh, good question. Jeff. I mean, like, I, I mean, mean Carowell has got to be, I'm going to guess on Carowell at this age. I'm going to say Carowell is 45. And then, uh, Jay's like 33. I'm going to guess. I don't know if that's the youngest, but it'd be near, near the top without a doubt. Villanova, uh, has been young for a while and will continue to be young. They'd be one of the strongest competitors right there. Now they lost Jay Wright. Kyle Neptune takes over. So collectively, if it's not Duke, it might be Nova. Yeah, Shire turns 35 uh, this month. Mm -hmm. But, you know, right now of the, you know, the head coach and the three assistants, three of the four are 34 or younger. <laughs> like that's 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 not normal. So, uh, like, yeah, right. and there's no, like, and it's, I love it, but like, we'll and, see. And you, yeah, and you mentioned, you mentioned like, the other interest, like Duke has been one of the biggest brands in the sport for a long time now. I would argue the biggest brand in the sport. And, um, but by the time most of us who cover this sport um, on a daily basis, by, by the time most of us got into covering the sport, he, Mike Krzyzewski was already in a, another stratosphere. So we've all spent time with Mike and, you know, talked with Mike and sat with Mike in the, you know, in the, on the grassroots uh, circuit. But, I, not many of us, you weren't really getting close to Mike, you know, and, and yet we've all known John since he was a player, if not since he was a prospect uh, before he even got the Duke. And so that, that's another interesting thing about this Duke staff is you look at it and like we've all known John Shire, Jay Lucas and uh, Emil Jefferson since they were, you know, college basketball players. So to now um, have them you know, together running this massive basketball brand. Um, it, it, it's, 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 I don't know. Like I, it's neat. I like it. It's a reminder that you're, you know, we're getting old, me older than you, but, um, Always. but, but it is a, yeah, forever and ever and ever, but it is, um, it's neat. I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to, 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 
the new era of Duke basketball. And you can tell by where I've got them ranked uh, fifth in the top 25 and one. I think, I think they're going to be really strong. I guess that adds up to a two seed for me. So you say three, four, five seed range. And Mark I say down for Duke as a four seed in the 2023 NCAA tournament. Yeah, put me down for a two seed in the 2023 NCAA tournament. Shouts to Devin Downey. Shouts to Chester, South Carolina. Shouts to Huck, Larnell. Thank you guys once again for listening to the Iron College Basketball Podcast. If you're not subscribed, please go subscribe anywhere you subscribe to podcasts, including Apple Podcasts. While you're there, five stars. Write a nice review. There's more of us than there are of them, and we will talk to you again real soon. Till then, take care.